I'm going to change the name of this first object. And the second object as well. Select that and apply. I see the two name changes here. What if I had more I.O. to add, um, for example, a new I.O. module? Under the physical I.O., this is the I.O. associated with a 575. If I wish to add an expansion I.O. module, like the 5506 analog input, I can give it a name. And we'll use the default address and settings. I'll automatically create the objects uh, to those I.O. channels, and I won't assign DMP or Modbus addresses at this time. So here's the new objects created. I can see them in the master list here as well. And instead of applying them, I'll remove them. and I'll delete the objects associated with those. If I wanted to add more objects of system data, similar to these, I can add a new object and select the source or association to be system data. And I can select under categories of system data Let's try sys status. And to find out what objects are in this category, I need to go to the help, typing in system data. Here are all the categories here. I'm going to select my status, and I see here that, yeah, I'd like to try the select button. So returning to this definition here, so I type in select button, and I see there's the name of the reference. That's correct. And with the uh, red exclamation mark, I still need to give this object a name. And there's my new system data point. I'll apply this change. Now I'd like to see these variables appear on the logic side. This uh, column here shows how the objects will appear as variables in logic. To see that, I open the editor and looking at the elementary variables, there are none of those, but derived variables, these are the ones that are objects. Here's all of them here. Scrolling down, we see the two that I named pressure and tank level. Here's the system uh, data objects, but I don't see my select button. Let's have a look and see why that might be. Well, this is the variable type that's shown in uh, logic. And if it says none, then that means this object will not be available in logic. So yes, this is what I did here as well. The select button, I need to select a, a logic variable type in order to see it within the logic editor. So this is a, a select button that is actually a digital value and it's a Boolean. So the value is uh, true or false. I'll apply that change. And there's a select button here. So seeing our objects here in logic, well, what does that mean? I, I see Boolean here. I see integer here. Let's have a look. If I expand these, this is where we see the object properties. So not only is the Boolean value exposed to logic, but also the quality properties. So like whether it's online or forced, um, and you can look at all those properties as a byte for, for quality. What about for um, an integer? So we have the pressure as an integer. Now we have in the quality byte, we have the individual bits of uh, online, 
or offline. There's the under and over range, whether it's forced, and then the value as an integer. This number here is a unique identification number to identify each object. So the select button is also Boolean. It'll appear just like the, the ones above. We have the Boolean value and the quality. Here's one for real. This is the input supply voltage. It looks just like the integer where we have the under and over range quality, but the value is presented as a real value. With tank level, it's an integer value. But what about the limits? There was uh, various limit properties as well with this object. Let's go look back in Remote Connect configuration for tank level. Here's what's presented to logic. So this is where I could switch from digit from integer to a real. But if we select the advanced analog, In Unity now, there's the type of object has changed. And here are all the remaining properties. And there's quite a lot of them. So here's the under and over range. These are all the object quality values. There's the no change quality, as well as the uh, rate of rise, rate of fall. We have the online force value or whether it is forced. And then we have two values for real, one that's uh, the scaled real value and the integer raw value. Now here are the limits down here, whether they're enabled and the actual limit value. And then uh, if there's a, a transgression into that limit zone, the state turns on or off. Let's see what this looks like live in the controller. I'm going to switch back and give the limits a value. We'll enable the high limit and the low limit. Now in the logic editor, I can see that we haven't built the project yet. So if we want to see these values uh, live, first we need to build the project. And now we need to write it to the controller. So I'm going to select online. And then write. Now, typically, I need to return to, as the message says here, to the logic editor to answer these prompts. Selecting under Mode Connect. And then to build an animation table, I'm just going to put this one object in my animation table. So I'll select it, initialize animation table, and then expand the properties. So we can see, first of all, our engineering value is the real value. I'll just change that value here. And further down, we see we have two limits enabled, as we expect. And there's their values, 80 and 20.5. Now, if we're below 20.5, we probably should see the state come on. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to change the value and lower it. And when I go below 20, the limit one state is active. Similarly, if I go above the high limit, set for 80, there we are, there's the high state come on.
So you can see how we have a lot more than just a real value. We have many object properties that we can use in logic.